The Manhattan Engineer District, also known as the Manhattan Project, was a United States Army Corps of Engineers program with British participation that built the first atomic bomb. The MED was created in 1942, believing that Nazi Germany had a two-year lead in the development of nuclear weapons. The MED's major facilities were Enriched uranium production through gaseous diffusion in Oak Ridge, Tennessee, plutonium production at Hanford Engineer Works in Hanford, Washington, and atomic bomb research, development, construction, and testing in Los Alamos, New Mexico. Even though the theoretical possibility of an extremely destructive bomb had been known soon after fission was first discovered in Berlin in 1938, the MED was cloaked in total secrecy so as to shield the science, technology, processes, status, and results of the project from the Germans, the French, and the Soviet Union. The Soviets proved to be more proficient at espionage than nuclear science and technology. They penetrated the strict security of the MED at Los Alamos as well as other sites in the United States. Canada and the United Kingdom and the information gathered allowed the Soviets to offset their scientific and resource disadvantage. The Soviets first learned of the potential for an Anglo-American atomic bomb project from John Cairncross, a member of the Cambridge Five spies in Britain that supplied information to the Soviets into the 1950s. The MOD report contained the conclusions of a British committee established to determine the feasibility of constructing an atomic bomb. The report itself favored the use of uranium over plutonium and encouraged the United States to pursue that course. The Soviets inferred from the existence of the report some level of British and American cooperation that excluded them from any project. Cairncross had learned of the MOD report in his capacity as the private secretary to Lord Hankey, chairman of the British War Cabinet Scientific Advisory Committee. Donald McLean, another member of the Cambridge Five, also informed the Soviets of the potentially excluding partnership and continued spying for the Soviets while he was the British liaison to the U.S. Atomic Energy Commission that absorbed the MED. The Soviets had been establishing their spy network in the United States since the early 1930s and had successfully gained some access to the American scientific community through sympathetic émigrés and through the Communist Party of the United States of America, which at the time had a membership numbering in the thousands. Reflecting the importance they gave to the project, the Soviets code named their espionage program targeting the Med Enormous. No exact number of Soviet spies working on the project will ever be known. What is known as the spies who were caught, some belatedly into the 1950s, and those about whom information remains sketchy and were never caught. The primary responsibility for maintaining the secrets of the MED fell on the Federal Bureau of Investigation and the MED's own counterintelligence officers. The Lawrence Radiation Laboratory at the University of California, Berkeley, was an initial target and potential conduit of information because J. Robert Oppenheimer had left UC and the Rad Lab to become Los Alamos' scientific director. The Soviets attempted to contact several scientists there and in one case succeeded in gaining information from one scientist who was soon fired, as were several employees of the Metallurgical Lab at the University of Chicago. As was the case at all of the MED facilities, all of the personnel at Los Alamos were vetted, and stringent security was enforced. However, it was at Los Alamos that the Soviets had their greatest success. At least three people are known to have engaged in espionage at the facility, Klaus Fuchs, Theodore Hall, and David Greenglass. Though these spies worked at Los Alamos at the same time, they were unaware of the others' activities. Evidence gleaned from the Soviet Union's intelligence and security, KGB, archives and the Venona files allude to a possible fourth spy code named Perseus, initially code named Fogel. Klaus Fuchs, a German communist and theoretical physicist, fled Nazi Germany for Britain and was interned in Canada as an enemy alien before being assigned to the British scientific team working on implosion problems. Fuchs had earlier spied for the Soviets in Britain and that contact was re-established through the American chemist, Harry Gold, who served as a Soviet courier in the 1940s after intermittently spying for them beginning in 1935. Fuchs passed details of implosion and bomb designed to Gold in two meetings at Boston and Santa Fe in February 1945. Fuchs spied again for the Soviets as the head of the theoretical physics division of Britain's Harwell nuclear facility. British intelligence and the Federal Bureau of Investigation were alerted to Fuchs's espionage by Soviet intelligence cables decrypted by the joint American and British Venona project. Fuchs confessed, was convicted of espionage, spent 14 years in prison, and moved to East Germany upon his release. 
Theodore Hall, a Harvard-educated American physicist involved in the radioactive lanthanum test instrumentation, volunteered to spy for the Soviets and passed supplemental information confirming Fuchs's espionage. Venona uncovered Hall's espionage, but he did not confess at the time, although he did confess later, he was never tried. Fuchs and Hall may have pursued their espionage in an attempt to prevent the United States from holding a nuclear monopoly over the world, a goal that the information they passed helped to accomplish. David Greenglass, a U.S. Army draftee and special engineering detachment machinist, was initially assigned to Oak Ridge and then Los Alamos where he worked on the shaped charges for the Fat Man implosion bomb. He passed sketches of the implosion lens to Harry Gold and also passed information through his wife, Ruth, to his brother-in-law, Julius Rosenberg, the husband of Greenglass's sister, Ethel. The Soviets were willing to pay his tuition at the University of Chicago, but the school did not admit him after he left the army. Fuchs's 1950 confession implicated Harry Gold, who implicated Greenglass, who then confessed and implicated Ruth and Julius. The Rosenbergs were ardent communists and Julius, an American engineer, had passed industrial secrets to the Soviets prior to World War II before developing a network of other engineers who did not want the United States and the United Kingdom to emerge from the war with power substantially greater than the Soviet Union. Julius, codenamed Antenna and Liberal, never worked for the Med, but his espionage and that of Ethel, codenamed Wasp. Greenglass, codenamed Bumblebee and Caliber, and Ruth, codenamed Osa were confirmed from Venona Project's decryption of Soviet intelligence cables. The Rosenbergs maintained their innocence and did not cooperate with the authorities when offered lighter sentences. Greenglass's plea bargain testimony led to the Rosenbergs' execution. Greenglass was imprisoned for 15 years, but his wife was never formally charged. Alan Nunmay was part of the British scientific contingent originally assigned to work on the construction of the Chalk River, Ontario, heavy water moderated reactor. In that capacity he visited the Met Lab on several occasions during 1944 passing what information he gathered to the Soviets in February 1945. Bruno Pontecorvo fled to France from fascist Italy, then fled France ahead of the invading German army, and was part of the same British contingent assigned to Chalk River. He passed secrets from Canadian atomic research to the Soviets through 1949 when he returned to the United Kingdom to continue his atomic research there. Pontecorvo and his family fled to the Soviet Union when it was feared that Fuchs's confession would implicate him. Several unnamed or unknown spies also penetrated the Med. One American, codenamed Quantum, passed information about the gaseous diffusion process at the Oak Ridge facility. The Soviets also received some information from an English source code named Eric and from an anonymous package left at the Soviet consulate in New York City. A physicist code named Marr, who began working at the Hanford facility in October of 1943, also passed information to the Soviets. The secrets derived from the successful Soviet penetration of the Med prevented the United States and the United Kingdom from establishing a post-war dominance and led to the Cold War exemplified by the acronym MAD, Mutually Assured Destruction.